Hello great people, welcome back to our channel. We're so excited to have you again. Finally, iPub has reacted to the visit of Ojuzo Kalu and I think that uh, he's about to face the rod of uh, iPub uh, because they have promised to take it up with him in the event of this happening. You're going to hear uh, what their standpoint is in respect to his visit and what they actually tag that visit of Oju Zokalo and what is in the grapevine as a result of his relationship with the you know extraordinary um, rendition of Mazindam Dikanu from Kenya to Nigeria in June and also in another development uh, one of Ohane's chief thing in um, Kaduna State have been reportedly abducted you're going to hear uh, when it all happened and uh, the position of the person who related the news to the media but before we give you full details of all of these we'd like to encourage you to please subscribe to our channel by clicking on the red subscribe button and also the icon so that you get notification anytime we publish our videos the indigenous people of Biafra IPOB on Saturday vowed to hold Ojuzo Kalu the Senate chief will be responsible if anything happened to its leader, Mazinam Di Kanu. I lamented that Kanu, Kalu's unsolicited visit to Mazinam Di Kanu while in detention was worrisome and adding that the purpose of his visit was suspicious. Emma Powerful, the spokesman of IPOB, said the mission of the former governor of Abia State is unknown. In a statement he issued, Powerful said, We, the global movement and family of the indigenous people of Biafra IPOP, under the command and leadership of our great leader Mazinam Dikanu, is raising alarm over the unsolicited visit of Ojuzo Kalu to our leader Mazinam Dikanu whenever our leader Mazinam Dikanu is detained. We don't know the mission of the former governor of Abia State over the visit. And we are worried. We therefore wish to put the world on notice that Ojuzo Kalu will be held responsible for whatever happens to our leader Mazinam Dikanu in detention. We are not comfortable with Ojuzo Kalu suspicious visit to our leader. We don't know whose interest he protects. We will also hold responsible those who permitted him to see our leader in detention the separatist group also vowed to hold the department of state services dss responsible for any harm on mazinam di kanu i pop wonder why ojuzo kalu would be allowed access to its leader despite court ruling the dss allow him access against court order which all visitors including Kanu's lawyer, complied with. We all knew that Ojuzo Kalu's name is among those who bankrolled and sponsored the extra extraordinary rendition of Mazinam de Kanu from Kenya to Nigeria. And in another news, the former Kaduna Central Senator, Senator Sani, has identified one of those abducted by bandits in Anguang, Gimbia area of the state on Friday. Sani disclosed that the chieftain of Ohaneze in the state is a Fred Awagu Odum Ibo One was one of those abducted by bandits. In a tweet, the former law lawmaker lamented that the bandits operated freely for hours. According to the social political activist, the incident was a tragedy. He wrote Eze Fred Awagu Odum Ibo One and Ohane is a chief then in Kaduna State is one of the several persons abducted yesterday at Anguwa Gimbia in the outskirts of Kaduna City. The bandits operated freely for us. This is the tragedy of our time. Has been reported that UGM had attacked the Anguwa Gimbia community in Chikon local government area of Kaduna State. The UGM were said to have brought down at least two residents 
It was gathered that the incident which occurred on Friday morning also led to the abduction of over 50 persons in the community. The assailants were said to have invaded the community early hours of Friday with sophisticated stuff and were shooting sporadically, leading to the bringing down of two persons. I mean, this is just the news we keep hearing in Nigeria. But first of all, let's look at what um, the indigenous people of Biafra have to tell Ojuz or Kalu. Uh, a lot of people have reacted to these particular news, but I, I think that uh, right now, Ajuz or Kalu possibly may be regretting why he had to visit, you know, uh, Mazinam de Kanu based on the trade that is getting to him in event of anything happening to Mazinam de Kanu. Don't forget that this visit was, it's like a repetition, it had happened before. And it's happening again. And what we've heard uh, it was that, to some extent, Ojuzokalu was instrumental to the release of Mazinam Dikanu as at the first time this happened. Visiting Mazinam Dikanu the second time, for most people, it's quite troubling. But then, uh, according to Ojuzokalu, he said that when he visited Kanu, Kanu was overly excited at his coming and even wanted him to stay more days than he, oh, sorry, more hours than he did. But for IPOP, that is none of their concern. You understand? <laughs> their greatest concern is, Oga, oh if anything happened to our leader, uh, you go smoke with him, you know, believe say, you go smoke, you understand? So right now, people are like, uh, was it a crime for this dude to visit Mazinam de Kano? Uh, is it not that they are brothers? And, you know, all of that, it bothers the mind a great deal. But if I must give my opinion in respect to his visit, I think um, one of the things that I believe that one of the things he went there to do as to see Mazinam de Kano was to see how he can kind of doff down the tension thus far and also appeal to him to possibly give some consideration you know in respect to whatever standpoint he has about you know getting ipob and all of that but we already know that uh, mazinamikan is a very resolute person and he knows what he is pursuing and he will stop at nothing to ensure that it is being realized and uh, but i i think that uh, um, Ajuz Kalu just wanted to show the brotherliness and also um, to prove that uh, he has some level of influence on Mazinam de Kanu. Uh, for me, I don't think he means any evil. At, at least we uh, we are so sure that he didn't go there with food. Uh, we are so sure he didn't go there with water. We are so sure that he didn't go there in company of anything. And he, I believe also that he was closely being monitored because the people who are putting as who are keeping uh, vigilant over Mazinam de Kanu must be extremely careful so that they themselves do not run into trouble because uh, if they, if they allow anything to happen to him they know what they are going to face at least because they know the number of supporters he has globally so uh, for, with all of that in mind I don't think that they would have allowed anything funny to happen to them however we are hopeful that uh, this whole uh, Hula Balu will come to an end at the point, you know, where possibly Mazinam Nikano will be unconditionally released. Now, let, let's look at them. Another, the other news talking about uh, one of uh, those abducted being, you know, a member of Ohane's the Ndivo. We know that Ndivos are abducted all over Nigeria. There is no community, there is no town that you think of that you won't see them. They are everywhere doing their business everywhere and uh, him being a part of it is not shocking because i know that these so-called bandits they don't look at someone's face what they are most interested in is to satisfy themselves you know their corrupt conscience they go in there and when they take people all stage like that the purpose is to make good money out of them and i, I mean with what this guy said yesterday uh, talking about the uh, coalition of northern groups this government has failed nigerians a great deal and there's nothing anybody can do about it as we are talking nothing the only thing right now is we are surviving by the mercies of god and most people are just praying 
that let these banditry activities not start heating on cities because uh, most people may not really have a place to run to right now it, it, it's hanging around the neighborhood of cities you hear for example in kaduna state that it's just outskirts of kaduna city that they went to we've also heard the same thing in other states you know in nigeria and if nothing is done strictly about it it's going to be a serious issue now we've heard that they have been prescribed by uh, court of uh, of a law court that they have been prescribed but the prescription of these guys is really not the matter what are the strategy on ground to ensure that you trap them down and reduce the rate of bandits in nigeria because this banditry started some time ago all of a sudden it's skyrocketing on a daily basis every day the number is increasing which means that a lot of people are being encouraged by the successes of different banditry group to also form their own to see how they can continue to hit hard on the country you know and get their own quarter from the country so uh, there must be a strategy on ground to hit this problem at its root and bring possibly lasting solution to it however we'd like to leave it there go to our comment session